Hi everybody, Steve Scott here, and welcome to another episode of Judo Analysis. Well, in today's show, I want to pick apart Tomonagi. There's a lot to pick apart here because it's an extremely popular throw, very effective, a lot of different applications. But I'm going to focus in on primarily these kind of three applications. One is the basic straight line step in Tomonagi. Uh, by the way, Tomonagi means circle throw, rolling, uh, rolling a tight little ball and rolling them over you, so it means circle throw primarily. Okay, so the first one is a straight line step in Tomonagi, the very basic application of Tomonagi. Another one will be a both foot Tomonagi, where you use both feet to throw your opponent. And this is a very useful throw as a throw and also as a transition and also from the ground in Nawaza situation. So it's a, it, it's a very useful application of Tomonagi. So the both feet, uh, double foot Tomonagi. Another primary one I'm going to look at is the spinning or Yoko Tomonagi. And it is highly popular, very popular in all weight classes, actually. It's more thought of as a lightweight move in judo and sambo. But you see a lot of the bigger guys and gals use it too. So it is effective no matter what the weight class and certainly no matter whether it's male or female. So we're going to take a strong look at Tomo Nagi today. Uh, there are, there's a lot more to be said about it, but we're going to kind of take a look at it here and try to get it as brief as we, briefly as we can and make it as interesting as we can. So here we go on Tomo Nagi. Let's look at Tomoa Nage. Tomoa means, it generally interpreted means circle. Nage means to throw or to throw over some object. Tomoa is, is a round little thing like this. That's a Tomoa. So the Japanese named this circle throw or round throw, and it really is well named technique. There are several different ways to do it. We're going to show the real basic, standard, straight line step in Tomoa Nage, like everybody sees a lot. This may be old-fashioned, but an old coach of mine said it's, it's old-fashioned, it's cool. So here we go. So if you guys could tie up, we've got Derek and Mike here. Got a standard Kumikata natural, normal grip here. What, what Derek's going to do is basically step into Mike. I'll get out of the camera range here. He's going to step into Mike very low. That's his base leg. That's his anchor leg right there. And when he steps in, he's going to swing in and, and put his other foot into Mike's hip or his gut somewhere. And your per personal preference, whether you put your foot directly in the man's, not in his belt, like a lot of teachers tell, or to the side a little bit on his hip, totally up to you, totally up to the person doing it, make it work for you. So I'll, I'll come out and do it, get started again, guys. So, so he's going to step in, and he's going to basically roll over. Now Look at a Tomoanagi with a leg assist or a foot assist. Some people call it double leg or both leg Tomoanagi. Um, call it what you want, it still works. Here's what happens. I'm going to get out of the way here. Uh, Derek, are you going to start first? Okay. Standard Tomoanagi, just use the one leg. Well, this one, he's going to use both of them. So he may start with one and add the second one in to give it a little more impetus and to throw a little more control over Mike's body. And there we go. You can see how he's in there. And now when he does it, he will roll Mike over come right over on top of them. Double sleeve grip. When you're doing Tomoanagi, this type of Tomoanagi, you know, some throws like sumigation or corner counter throw, you want to get a big grip over the top. So get a big grip over This would be not a good grip for what we're going to do here. What we want to do, Derek wants to have clear opening inside of Mike's, the mass of Mike's body here, his chest, hips area, okay? So it's even better if Mike's really low and defensive because He's get, Mike is giving Derek his hips. He's giving him a lot of space to work in there. there we go. Having a, a double sleeve grip, could be low, could be high, your choice entirely. Depends on you. But you're using double sleeves here, grip here, grip here on the sleeve. As he steps in, he's just going to come in with a foot assist to Monagi. Right on top. Notice his both feet are pretty much in the hips. Okay? So, one more time, and then we'll let Mike toss you a few times. Come in there. Right on top. Great to more on Or Mike, why don't you do yours and show that people will do it all a little bit differently. Standard straight line to more on but again, it's just with a leg assist. Right on top. Quite good. Quite good. Notice how Mike's feet were right on Derek's hips and his toes were pointed out, heels in. 
Very nice. Very nice. There we go. Kind of hard for the guys to do it slow, but you're doing a great job, guys. Mike, do you want to go ahead and do it fast? Do it, do it fast, yeah. Step in. Man, right over. You may pick up also. Derek and Mike, when they're throwing each other, they're kind of steering with their hands and steering with their feet. So if the guy is turning too far to the side, you think you'll lose control or not get him completely onto his back, you may push him with your feet, with your hands a little more over. This is a really good one you can steer with. After you've done this enough, you kind of get the feel of it. And this is a good way to get that feel of it so you can steer him better with both your hands and your feet. So Mike's coming in. Now that lives. Let's look at Tomo Nagi in a no-gi situation. Tomo Nagi is circle throw. And we're going to do it with, um, Derek, why don't you explain it so you kind of set it up because we're going to have a head and arm, kind of a, a, right. almost a guillotine situation. Okay, so it's basically we're, we're going to do a, a snap down, but we don't snap all the way down to the ground. I'm going to pop the head down, catch, catch. Okay, so it's almost like I'm getting a head and arm guillotine. Okay, a lot of times we're from here and you just pop come back in on it okay and normally we're doing foot sweeps or singles but sometimes they catch on to that and they pop their hips back so as soon as his hips go back I know he's primed for its Moanagi so everything else from there is, is pretty standard I'm going to take a deep step in and I'm going to stick my foot up there or on his hip and then it becomes way easier because now I can actually pull and lever him over with his head and his arm so again I step Deep in. End up in a nice uh, position on top. Let's take a look at that hand position, that hand fighting you're doing. So in the top, let me get a better view here. So you got that right hand pretty much meat hook the back of the head. You're going to put that under. Pop out. Pop out. Okay. And come you kind of in. swim under, really. You kind of yeah. swim with your right hand under. Right. Come in. Now let me come, come to the other side here. Let's get a look at that view. We'll, I'll come from here. Okay. Okay. So get a popping out, mm -hmm. coming back in. So you're trapping, now look at that strong overhead trap. Okay, good. I'll come back to the other side, guys. You guys want, we're kind of running out of mat. Why don't you guys move toward Mike's back a little bit there. There you go. So let's have a look at that again. So pop out, hook, okay. and you come right over on top of them, finish with a mount position, dominant position there. Now you could be using this in no gi as well, or gi as well, no gi. It oh, just yeah. happens to work okay. very well for no gi. Pretty much anything you can use in no gi situation, definitely use in gi. Yeah. You know, I, I use this in sambo a lot, so it, it doesn't really matter if you've got a gi or, or not. You know, I could just as easily have a grip like this and pop down, snap them down into here, okay? And this is especially good for those guys who are very low very, they have their hips very far away. They're very defensive, or or just a low type slung low fighter. Okay, so again, got a good control of his head because if he wants to be down there, fine. I'm going to control what he's giving me, which is his head and his shoulders. And then a deep step in, come right over on top. So we'll we'll call that as basically a guillotine grip to start your tamonagi. Okay. We're going to look at Yoko Tomoanagi or side Tomoanagi. In the early days of, of you know, when this throw was, became popular back in the 60s, very popular, it was also called Tobi Tomoanagi or skip in style Tomoanagi because of the different ways they did the setup. But as time went on, as we saw more and more efficiency in this move, we saw it more to the side. So that's why it's often called Yoko Tomoanagi these days. This is a very versatile throw in just about every body weight class and every male or female, judo, sambo, whatever it may be. Let's take a look at Yoko Tomonagi's site. By the way, we'll also, it's a great setup, which we're going to do here in a bit, into Juji Gatami, which we really like. So we'll, we'll be doing a bit of that too. So let's get the guys here. We got, okay, we got uh, Mike and Derek here. Derek's going to be doing the technique. I'll step over here, guys. Now, when we start our Yoko Tomonagi, Derek is going to be leading with his left. He's got a right side grip, but he's going to be leading with his left primarily, okay? That's his, that's his setup leg. That's his base leg or sugar foot, whatever you want to call it. That's because why we do that is because he wants all the space to be able to move under Mike, tuck under him, put his foot right about here somewhere, and throw him over his head. So when he does this, he's going to be, look, just we'll break it down to start, put your foot in there and roll your head, and watch how he rolls his head under. It's very difficult not to throw him once you do this because the momentum, the 
the body the body went going over as you can see how that happened so he knows he wants to start with his left foot and look at that right foot there and he comes right over and he can go over to the top as you can see it's very important in learning don't go to nagi come into it again leave that foot again leave the other foot okay now when he puts that foot up there that's Derek's cue to curl very shrimp very tightly get his elbow in don't float your elbow get your elbow in and that helps put your body in a very compact tight space see how the position is here the back leg is driving off the mat the back leg here this is a driving off the mat eventually it won't but right now it's driving off the mat for more power into the throat okay come on come on do it again go ahead and stay there sandy with the video we can start there so let's go ahead and do it do it one more time actually throw I'm right over on top. Very, very useful technique in all body weight classes, but you tend to see this a lot in the lighter weights because this comes out of a very fast tempo in judo and some, but we see that very fast tempo right over, finishing up. There are other ways to do it, to finish out. You can throw across your body. You want to try it with, throw it, when you wait, come on, yeah, throw the side, I'll get out of your way, guys. So here's a, here's a variation of it, to throw that way. Once you go in, he direct through Mike across Derek's body. One more time, guys. Just a little different variation. Angle of the throw is different a bit here. And there we have that. That's a very popular way to do it as well. So these are just some variations of doing Yoko Tomo and Aigi. Now let's take a look at how we like to do Yoko Tomo and Aigi right into Juji because we find great value in that as well. And this is. You know, I first picked it up in Sambo, and uh, we've been using it a lot. It's about any fighting sport we do, we like to do this technique. So can you just demo spinning juju to Tomonagi? And there we go. So Yoko Tomonagi has a lot of value, if nothing else. You, you may not like it as a throw, but you sure may like it as a setup to get your juju to Tommy. And there we go. You notice he did it a little slightly different. He put his leg on the outside, of his, his foot on the outside of Mike's hip, uh, just as a setup to get the body across. Do that one more time. Right like that. That's also good too. So if you do, if that's what you want, is it Tomonagi set up to a juji? That's often a good way to get it. So there we have Yoko Tomonagi uh, as a throw and also as a great setup. I'm doing mine off of the left side, but you can do it off of the right side just as easily. So I'm going to come over on the same side that I want my leg up. I want my right leg up. So I'm going to rotate over here. And then as I come in, I'm going to lead with my left and push his right leg. Okay? Push, he moves. My foot comes up. Push again. And over we go. And you can flip over on as well. But use your your hands just like you work with them. Okay? Through, push. See it's very economy of movement everybody and like Don Hinchcliffe was saying earlier you don't want to give him a lot of air time where he can spin out and maybe counter do something else you want to get him fast on his back and this is a way of doing it can you come from a different angle so we can see a back, back view of this Hard pull, real hard push. Okay, if you don't have that, it's, it's not going to work. So here, I'm pushing, and I get my foot nice and deep, and I sit back, and I don't use my hands, you just collapse it down. Okay, no more going on. I'm going to pull nice and hard on the sleeve, turn, my body to sink, look at whichever side you're going to go, try to get it as quickly as you can. It's a very fast turn into that direction. So if your right foot is pushing, you're actually rolling to your right. Yes, but you're, you're pulling so hard and punching so hard with this hand, it's almost easy to turn that way. Can you show us one more time and show us the hand action as you're doing it? Maybe from a different direction here. Here, push, okay. Put up as I'm coming down and pulling nice and hard. Lift, and I'm going to feel my hand up. 
all of a sudden try to punch the mat. So I've got a good pull here. My knuckles are punched right on the mat. I'll try and do it a little bit slower. See, my hand's right here, touching the mat. Still got a good, nice, tight grip here. It's, the leg is definitely a big part to throw, but the hands are, are really the, the star there. But in a real finish, you'd follow up, follow right onto him under a you know, holding situation on top of him. Okay, let's try that, guys. You know, kind of a, a Yoko Tomonagi, a side Tomonagi, um, that is a, a really nice fake out style because what Derek's going to do, are you going to use your left foot to prop with? Right. Your right foot. So he's going to fake, he's going to like do a foot sweep, fake with a left foot sweep, sweep to open open him up. See that little, see I slapped the inside of his foot? That made Ben open up, okay? So start that again. So they open up, you stand your grip and just kind of fake a coachy and you slip him right in. Okay, so it's a really nice way to set up. It's standard stuff. You know, you see guys like Kasha Wazaki probably did this with great success and, and others. But uh, it really is a good way to open his legs up and open his stance up to get your Tomonagi in. So can you... And really that, that initial setup is, is, is really just the setup. It's, it's to elicit a response. It's to open Ben up. Can you show how you open him up? Just kind of slap his, like a fake Akouchi actually. Boom, there you go. See, it puts your foot right there, like you say, stay in line with that. Then he goes to action. Spins right in. Once we open up that face for you, the, the same thing we were doing before about moving with that knee, it's going to be the, the same kind of pattern. I'm just opening it up more of a classic style of that. Moving his foot and then letting my foot continue down. And then this one is going to curl that knee super, super tight. And I'm going to try and pull and kick that way. So there's some, oh, some twist to it that wasn't there before. Okay, so instead of him coming right there, I'm going to twist in and try to extend that way. So I'm up and under. And as long as you're pulling on the, the sleeves, it makes the twist fairly simple. Okay? Now you were saying earlier, because I'm controlling this hand and pulling super hard, you can't post that the cartwheel out. And if he does try and post with that, I'm pushing him that way. So he's thinking the cartwheel that way. I'm thinking he's pulling him and extend my leg when he can go behind him. Let go of the pull or the, the push until he's over there. And in that reaction, I'm still in the middle of it, but slightly forward. So I've got to curl under a little bit harder and pull harder. Variation of Tomonagi, Yoko Tomonagi. And it's more to the side than straight over the top. And the way that I like to set it up is I was thinking, how am I going to be able to, which direction am I going to be able to break this balance the easiest, whether I'm standing doing a standing throw, a forward throw, a rear throw, or a sacrifice throw. And if I can get this leg forward and I see his balance easily broken this way now, and I can set underneath him in here and set down and place my foot here. I'm a right-handed player and I've still got control of this right side so he can't stick his hand out to stop this throw. And then I can turn him over and just rotate him over my foot. Okay? If this foot was forward, that foot is forward and I'm stepping in trying to do this. His foot's here and 
And when you try to throw him over the top of that leg, it makes it a lot harder, a lot tougher for me to be able to do that. So I want to be able to get this foot forward. So what I'll do is just walk back. Just go over. Just going to walk a little back. Just like this. Okay? We're going to walk back this way. So what I'll do is when this foot's coming forward, which is what I want, I'll place my foot right here. Okay? So this foot's back. This foot's forward. Now I'm inside. Now I'm going to sit down and stick my foot right in here, like right here. And I'm probably going to put my right under his belt. On his stomach, on his hip. Okay? So I'm going to sit in and stand up. Okay? So I'm going to sit in here and just turn it over to the side. Because that's where the balance is going. Okay? So it's a really easy setup for this throw. We're just going to walk it over. Walk it back. He decides I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back more. He starts throwing this way. And I'm not going to take that step. I'm going to let it step right into it, sit down in it, and come up to the side. Control this arm so you can't reach out and stop it. So we're practicing. Take one or two steps back. Come back this way. I'm going to pick up this foot like I'm going to step back. I'll pull with this hand just like we were going to walk. And then I don't pick this foot up and step back. I pick it up and I put it right back down so it gets in. And then I'm just going to sit down, put my foot here, and rotate him over my foot. And then I use my hands, both hands, to rotate him over. Okay? Questions? <coughs> Good. Let's try it. We're going to do a nice turn uh, in this particular case. It's like a double foot to Monaghan. And you're already on the bottom, and it's, it's a really cool move. And you'll see, Derek, why don't you do a demo on, on Eric here? And just, just do it, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay, let's go over the pin first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we always want to get a juju coming at the end, but right now let's just do the pin. So just take a look at the pin. <coughs> Right there, she's you are right on. I mean, you, any type of a pitting situation you want. So let's look at this, and I'm going to have Derek talk to you about how he's actually getting under here. Uh, key things to remember: if he is, if you're fighting off your buttocks, off your backside, and you know you're using your feet like hands, we always talk about that. He's he's controlling in this particular case. He's got double sleeves. He might he might have a different grip up here at the lapel. It, it really, what he wants to do what's his preference, where you have better control. So that's something that's that's on you. Play with that tonight and practice and see which works better for you with type of the grip. Um, it's very difficult to come over the top, so you're probably going to get a, a lapel and sleeve or a double sleeve situation. I would not say do a double lapel grip because he can post out with his hands. You, you want to at least control at least one appendage, if not both. That's why he grabs double sleeves to do this. He likes to whip them over and control his arms. But key thing to remember, Derek's going to scoot under Eric as far as he can. And his feet are in his hips. And, and, and look at his feet. You see his toes are out. His heels are in. He's really manipulating at the hips. So he's controlling his, his opponent. And as he does that, he scoots under. And he's just, it's a basic roll. Yep. Okay, so go ahead. So you're going to put your feet in and, and pull a little bit. And then pop your butt straight back if you can. Okay? Boom. See how he's going forward? Okay. Now from here, you keep pulling. You straighten your feet out. Roll over the shoulder. Okay, if you're rolling over the shoulder, usually coming into 
floating pin and the Uwaza is easier because they just roll over the shoulder. But some of you might come straight over into the mount. Okay? So you, you point out a very important thing here that a lot of guys have trouble with. Like to get them on board. Is what the phrase he uses, which is a very good phrase. Can you talk about how you popped into there? That's a key okay. point why you screw up on. So I'm not just gonna try and get him from here, okay? Because then when I push, he goes backwards. Okay? So I'm gonna use my feet and pull him to get him right about there and then my, my hips can go underneath, okay? So pop, boom, there he goes, okay? Keep pulling, keep pushing with your feet and then roll over that shoulder. And if you keep a hold of his sleeves or his lapels or one lapel, one sleeve, whatever it is, you should be able to pull yourself right up if you stay nice and round. situation. So I want to take it away. It's a really skillful application of how to get into Jujutsu time. All right. So first things first, hands on top or slightly inside his forearm sleeves. Okay. That allows me to pin his arm in and get ready for the, the Juji. If I'm out here, I'm going to have to come around and secure the arm. So the pull's a little bit easier and it allows me to collect his arm into my torso. Okay. So as he pops up, Okay, I gotta hold everything. I'm gonna bring him in, shift. Okay, so you can already see me underneath there. Okay, boom, boom, over, around. You can see I'm coming up with this foot down and my knee right here. Okay, the next thing is that this foot is gonna cut in right there. Okay, I'm gonna roll towards his feet. That frees up this leg. So you're, everybody's always like, I'm on my knee, I can't get my knee over there. Yeah, because your weight's on the knee. Of course you can't get that over there. So roll towards his belt and his feet. See how that allows me to collect his, his head? And now I sit back. Turn around in the other direction. Sure. Okay, he pops up, down, shift, back, over, foot down on the mat so I can roll up onto my knee. Got his elbow and my chest like I always do when I'm doing a Juji Katami. The foot that's flat on the mat is going to cut up underneath his shoulder because I pulled this arm up. Okay, now I'm sitting on his chest with that thigh and I'm going to roll towards his belt line to free up the knee that I'm posting on right now. Boom, catch the head. I'm sitting right back on my butt, cross my feet for the guys that like doing that. Everybody else heels in. Collect and sit back.